Hello, people. Yes, I'm back. And this is kind of a, a salute to my original theme that I started with this channel back in 2018. And it has to do with people of a certain age, regardless of how you're coming to make up, of you don't have to just wear beige because you've hit that certain age. Now, my anniversary for this channel passed a few days ago. It was August 28th. I've been doing this since August 28th when I put my first video up in 2018. And I've kind of gotten away from the original look. Just because you happen to have hit a certain set of numbers, the fashion cops cannot tell you what to wear or what not to wear. And let me be real about this, because there is a lot of them that are determined that my age, which will be 63 in a few days, or somebody even 35, should not be wearing glitters or bold colors. We should be getting more neutral, more quiet. And I am reminded every time they talk about being quiet that well-behaved women do not make history. Yeah. And I'm going, let me go back to that original idea. And part of this got started because the other day I watched an Emily Hanhan video that she did with a Twitch streamer named Audra. I've got the link down in the stuff. And if I didn't, yell at me. But she did it just the other day. And they were talking about the same thing. Where once you get to 35, in the YouTuber sphere, you kind of disappear. You don't exist. If you're not young and, and completely unwrinkled, you don't exist. And it's like, excuse me, I've earned every one of these wrinkles. I've worked hard to get every one of these wrinkles. And if you don't believe me, just ask me. I'll be happy to tell you the whole story. You don't get wrinkles without living. And if you're living, there is Nobody, nobody allowed to tell you what you can and cannot wear except yourself. Now, if you put yourself in the military, there are some exceptions. You know, there's that kind of thing. If you are in certain religious sects, there will be some exceptions, but you chose those exceptions. You chose them. It's up to you to live up to them. The exceptions that other people, the fashion cops, try to impose on you. If you think wearing a mask is bad because we're trying to keep people from getting sick, how about wearing clothes that you don't like and makeup that you don't like just because somebody else thought it fit fashion? Really? Why should I have to wear beige? Yes, I'm a grandmother. Yes, I have grandchildren old enough to produce another generation. I could be a great-grandmother. I still don't remember anybody taking away my right to choose what I do to my face. We're not talking about Texas. <laughs> That's a whole other ball of beans, and all that'll do is get me thrown out the corner. Anyway, I've got the moisturizer on. I've got the SPF on. 
I'm getting ready to do my elf eye primer. Because I love this stuff. And we will do something with color. 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 Because I can, and I want to, and I like color. Because color is a delightful thing. Color makes me feel good. I can just look at colorful things, and I feel better. I can look at people who like to wear colorful things, and I feel better. You know, I was checking my little fan back here, because it's a little muggy in my room today, because it's decided to heat back up a bit. So I've got my little fan going. Try to keep me cooled down some. I don't know. I get a little het up about these topics. Alrighty. Now, I've got a picture that I pulled. I was going through Facebook and I'm attached to several um, several different groups that post some incredible pictures from nature. And between me and several thousand other people, we use those pictures, beg pardon, to pick colors. My nose is itchy and I'm trying not to scratch it. Oh. And picking those colors, it just, it gives you so many different ideas of what you could do. You don't have to place them. Like if you pick a flower, if there's a particular color that's like on the inside of the petal. That doesn't mean you have to put it here. You can put it out here. You can put it up here. Doesn't matter. Put it where it feels good to you. Now, the picture I picked is a um, pea flower. And if I do it right, I should get the picture up in here somewhere. Now, the picture has got an electric blue in the petal. And then it's got an almost neon green on the interior. But along the fine edge of that petal is another electric, but it's purple. There are some glorious colors in this flower. Now, when I've done the flower inspiration or whatever picture inspiration with anyone else, and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, you have to go over to 4F Beauty because she started a whole series on picture inspiration. And it's a bunch of collaborations with a bunch of us that said, sure, let's take the same picture and see how each one of us does it. And she's got, got like 50, 55 different videos, different pictures, and it's great. You need to go see it. But I would love to see what she does with this one. Angie, you heard me. She's a purple thing. Purples and blues and greens and all. Oh my. Anyway. That picture caught my attention. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do today. And I wanted to start with something that I hadn't done before. 
I wanted to start with something that I haven't been studying for a while. I'm going to start putting a little bit of the primer elf on my face, not sponsored, on some of the places where I need a little help. Now, this is the, the blurring stick. And I'm putting that on the red spots. Because that's where some of my worst pores are currently. And, you know, I've got a little sun damage here and there. Because when I was a teenager and young adult, it was all about get the tan, get the tan, get the tan. And they were selling tanning products, not sunscreen, tanning products. Things with like, you know, maybe SPF 4 <laughs> so that you could get a tan. And it was mostly just oils for oiling your body so you would stay moist while you were getting this tan. Let that sit in. Yes, I have a thing for Elf. If you've never been here before, I have a thing for Elf. Now I'm going to tell you, if you have never really decided to work with color before, do yourself a favor. Other than putting a little primer on, do not do your face makeup first. Just don't. No. Don't. Because some of the very colorful makeup, very colorful stuff, will drop, speaking of drop, dropping things, will drop fallout on your face if it happens to be a very powdery, shadow that just goes foof as soon as you touch it in the pan because if it goes foof in the pan it's going to go foof on your face with the brush and you want to be able to kill the fallout without wrecking your your base makeup let's what did i do with that let me get me another one since Okay, this is my idea of a makeup wipe. Okay, see this? Fabric. This is some of the, uh, this is one of the microfiber cloths. I got this version in a pack of three at Dollar Tree. Okay, okay. No, it's not as thick and fluffy as the fancy ones you Get. but it was a dollar for three as opposed to like 20 bucks okay my cellar water give it a little shake stick your finger in there put a few drops on the cloth and that is plenty to do things like clean up around your eyes if you're doing makeup or clean up down around here, if you're doing makeup that's got fallout or you want to sharpen the line on, you know, your shapes and such, it's plenty. You do not need a big horking face wipe from one of those little packets that's going to dry out before you're finished with your whole face. Oh, <gasps> whoa. And those things get expensive. Even the cheap ones eventually get expensive because you're throwing them away. There's no reuse. You're throwing them away. This is micellar water. Dry and sensitive skin from Dollar Tree. I get several bottles at a time. Like I said, Dollar Tree. I also have a bunch of the little micro cloth baby washcloths from Dollar Tree, six for a dollar. Just saying, just saying. Anyway, 
I'm going to get started here on putting some color on the, my eye. Now, I'm not doing what normally gets done when I'm doing the, the collaboration with Angie. I'm not doing just colors from the picture. I'm just not. It's just not how I'm rocking it today. Oh, any of you think that a 63-year-old cannot speak like that? Let me remind you, I was a teenager going up through the late 60s and all through the 70s. You want to try me again about how I'm allowed to talk? Can you dig it? Now, I've already got a really white base going on from the putty, but I'm going to put a little more white on here just because. Now, this is a regular matte white. I'm not going to worry about giving you the names of some of these shadows because it's not going to matter. Find the shadows you like. On top of that, this is a bad habit. Or is this a face candy? This is a bad habit palette called Light Speed. Bad habit got themselves in deep dutch quite some time back which is too bad because i love their prices they got in deep dutch because they were cutting too close to the bone with duping some of the high-end stuff but before they went under I managed to grab some stuff, and don't start with me about this. The high-end stuff, I never would have been a customer for anyway, because old lady on disability pension, I ain't got the money for it. I ain't got it. And if I ain't got it, they weren't going to get it to begin with. So don't come for me about this stuff, especially right now where they've got this company called Dossier that is duping out fancy perfumes. I don't hear anybody jumping up and down about that. Nobody. There's even YouTube commercials about Dossier who is telling you straight up what scent this is supposed to smell like. So, do not bring it up. Do not bring it to me. Do not at me. Yes, I know how to speak computer. I am not, I repeat, not technology illiterate. Now, I'm picking up a deep blue that's very similar to the deep blue in that flower picture. See that one right there? Now, I barely touched that, so It's not going to look the same when I put it on my eye as it did on the tip of my finger because I didn't really pull a swatch worth. Now, I have hooded eyes. Hooded eyes have a bad habit. Because they fold down, see, all this stuff up here folds down to my eyelashes when I open. 
Now, if you have deep set eyes or hooded eyes, you're going to get a lot of transfer because the eyelid is rubbing back and forth. If you have deep set eyes, you need to go see Angie again because she does a tutorial on the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes, and she has deep set eyes. So if you have deep set eyes, she has got the tutorial you need to watch. Tortorial. Oh, I must be getting hungry or something. I'm thinking of tortillas. Now I am getting a basic shape started here. Because one of the pro one of the other problems with having hooded eyes is you really, really don't get to do a nice sharp winged liner. Because right where the winged liner has to go, you get all this folded stuff. So you end up with all this jagged stuff. And it looks nasty. So I work around that by using shapes in the eyeshadow that give you the kind of a the hint of such a shape without doing it with okay now see this is what I'm talking about here. Let me find my wet corner or see if I need to wet the corner again because they do dry out. This is what I'm talking about. With fallout. See, I've got little blue specks all the way over to the side of my nose because this particular shadow is kind of loose. <laughs> so you start flicking the brush and it gets poofed everywhere. I'll darken that up with some other stuff. Now, one of the problems with this particular palette, even though I love it to death, is I've had it since just a few months after starting this channel. So it's kind of on the old side. And some of the shadows are getting kind of dried out, grumpy. So they're not working quite as well as they used to. Now, see, here's another problem. I've got nobody is symmetric. Nobody is symmetric. It just don't work that way. And I've got more droop on one side of my face than on the other. No, I have not had a stroke. It just worked out that way. Well, there have been some debates on that about whether or not I've had a stroke. Until they tell me otherwise, I'm going to continue to deny. Then again, they kept telling me a lot of my being tired issues and having trouble doing things issues that required a lot of physical exertion that was making me really, really tired a lot faster than it should have. I was told that was either all in my head or all in my overweight backside. Come to find out when somebody else was listening to me about what I was saying, I've had a heart attack at some point. They can't pinpoint it anymore. They don't know how long ago it was because 
Nobody listened to me back when I was first having the issue. So, but now, when I not so long ago went and had a nuclear cardiac scan, oh, lo and behold, there's enough damage that they could see it. Not a whole lot, but enough damage that they could see it. And they're going, oh. You had coronary at some point. And I said, I believe that's what my physician said. And you told me my physician was full of it. And other physicians before this one told me I was full of it. So, yeah. Just make my day, huh? Alrighty, now, there's this lovely green right in here that I'm going to use. Like I said, the names of the colors isn't going to matter. And you don't have to worry about the names of the colors. You may not be using the same picture. You don't have to. If you do, I'd like to see it. I dare you. I'm on Instagram. You can send me a picture. No, I'm not going all the way over. You can do whatever shapes on your eyes you want to do. You don't have to follow anybody else's pattern. Now, I take the color up towards my eyebrow because if I don't, when my eyes are open, you won't see it. Anything that's down here on this lower mobile lid disappears pretty much when my eyes are open. So I carry the color up so that people can see it even when my eyes are open. But I don't have to follow a particular pattern or shape or anything else. The other thing you don't have to do, if you don't want to, is blend this stuff. See, when I get to the edges here on this one, I'm kind of blending it in right there at that demarcation line where we go from, I hate allergies, where we go from the green to the blue. And I'm kind of just swirling it a little bit so it mixes and blends together. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. If you look at some of my other vids, you will see some places where I've got a very specific demarcation line between colors that are right next to each other. Because that's what I wanted to do with it. That was the look I was going for. That was the effect I was going for. Now, I was hoping to do this without having to close down too much, but my nose is not cooperating. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I had to sneak off. We're, I'm on the desert side, otherwise known as the eastern side of a state in the Pacific Northwest, where we have all kinds of wildfires going on. Wildfire. Yes, I was not born here. I was born on the southern east coast. Can you tell? 
Anyway. Oh, now my nose is going to itch. I'm going to keep going with my pretty colors and see where I end up next. Let's see. Get that brush. And kind of liven this bit up just a bit. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to repair this brush. Oh, you don't think you can repair brushes? This is a wood handle with a metal bezel. And I just hand it over to my husband and he grabs up a, the, the Gorilla Glue. Or as some people like to call it, yep, there we go, Gorilla Snot. And he fixes it. put that down before I lose the pieces and grab see that's one of the reasons I have several of the same brush it's not a requirement but if you're doing things like doing the videos and stuff having more than one of a specific brush to hand is very helpful now the purple that electric purple that's in the picture is only a little thin band going around the outside of the blue on the flower. I don't care. I'm going to use more of it because you don't have to follow the flower as a pattern. Nobody is going to yell at you about following that flower as a pattern and if they yell at you about it smack them one smack them yes I'm doing a little bit of the under eye stuff right now just because I want to Watch people, watch other people that do their makeup. There's a lot of people on YouTube who do their makeup. Nobody does it the same way. Nobody does it precisely the same way. Now, this little pat, pat palette, pat, uh, it's called Aftershock. It's also from Bad Habit. Which means it's kind of a duplicate for something else. I'm not sure what it's a duplicate for. It's been that long. But it's got lots and lots and lots of really, really bright stuff intense stuff okie dokie let me get one of these now I went back to that first palette where I picked up the green because down here, right below the green, is a gold with a green. And that's what's going in the, in the very inner corner. I'm going to see how it goes first with it dry. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to hit it with the spritzer. Actually, that's doing pretty well. 
Now, with the spritzer, it doesn't have to be setting spray. It can be plain flipping tap water. But whatever it is you use to spritz, because some shadows do work better with a little moisture, never ever put a wet brush into your shadow pan. You will regret it a lot because you'll end up with hard pan which means you're going to not be able to pick up color off of that pan now you can fix it once maybe twice but if you keep getting that pan of color wet it's going to hard pan all the way through at which point the only way to reclaim it is if you pull out what's left, mill it back down, better known as crush it back down to a fine powder, remix it with an oil and some alcohol, and repress it. Don't get it wet. Now, getting the brush wet is another deal. Once you've got the color on your brush, you can spritz the color where it's laying on the bristles. Which means eventually you're going to get some fluid down here at the base of the bristles. And it will run in and then you will have this situation here. It will loosen up the glue and then you will have a pretty stick. If you're spraying your brush, once you're finished spraying it, if there's water down here or whatever fluid down here at on the bristles and on the ferrule, that's the metal and or plastic piece that attaches the bristles to the stick, you do this. You take the crook of your finger Stick the brush in the crook of the finger and give it a couple of turns to wipe that excess moisture off. It helps. This brush, I've had this brush for probably the entire time I've been doing makeup. This is an e.l.f. brush that sells for a dollar at some of the drugstores, sometimes two dollars. You can also get some of these sometimes at Dollar Tree. It's just an e.l.f. smudge brush. Okay? But if you take care of them properly, they'll last for blessed ever. Okay. So far, so good. I'm liking that. Now I'm going to take the other side of this flat brush and I'm going to pick up, there's a brighter gold that was in the pan just above the green gold. And I'm going to take the brighter gold and go up this way and right along that brow bone. and right under the eyebrow. And why? Because I can. Now here's another issue with trying to do your makeup and the reason your makeup will not look identical side to side. If you are dominant handed and complete foo with the other hand, you're going to have this problem. I am 
I have problems. Shut up. I have problems with my hands. You see, I was originally, according to several people, I was originally, oh yeah, with this, don't use a color switch. They're very, very hard on your bristles. Just use a corner of the little rag you got here. Works fine. I was originally supposed to be a left-handed person. Being my age means that at the time the doctor told my mom it would be okay that it would not hurt me to correct the left-handedness. Okay. I have trouble identifying where my the left side of my body is, not because of a stroke, but because I had to learn to ignore the left side of my body as a small child. That's a long story. We'll save that for another one. Actually, I've got it in a couple other videos, so you can go look that one up. Yes, I get uppity with my eyebrows. I raise them up while I'm doing this. I don't know why. I just always have. And try as I might, I have never yet been able to convince myself to keep my eyebrow down while I'm doing this. To give more of a flat natural line. So, there you go. Elf. Eyebrow pencil, two dollars. Not sponsored. Still not sponsored. It's kind of like I love my AOA Studio stuff, and I have an AOA Studio mirror, and it says "not sponsored," mm -hmm. so you can see it. See, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I keep hoping. <laughs> I've had a little bit of PR that's come in. Um, Apto Skin Care sent me a little thing. But since my uh, following is also still a little thing after all this time, I haven't really gotten a lot more of anything else. Okay, Sarah. Tis what tis. Got my eyebrows. Clean up under here just a little bit. just because I want to keep most of it where it belongs. Most of it. I just said most of it. So, now, I'm going to get, I've got two different kinds of consqueeler. Yes, I've been listening to Nady too much, consqueeler. This is the ELF HD Lifting Concealer. And this one is the ELF Hydrating Camo Concealer. Look, I like ELF. I like their price point. I like their quality. I like their stuff. I can usually pick up some of it over at the drugstore without a problem. 
Got to put a little water on my sponges. There we go. A little hot and dry here today. Yeah, I'm liking that so far. Let them soak it up a little here. Now, I've got spots. Got little scars. Got little red places. Now, see, even though the HD concealer has the same basic name on it, of being light, it's quite a bit more tan than this one is. This says fair, this says fair warm. Right? Right. See my little tiny one? Now, the HD in fair, during the summer, when I've had a little more sun on my face, is almost enough by itself to use as foundation. Almost. I just, I don't like to use, I don't like the concealer formula as a foundation. It just does not make me happy. I've tried it. Because there have been some other people who say, oh yeah, just put some concealer on and to heck with the rest of it. And I'm going... Sorry. All I'm doing is smearing it out, though. Boink, 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 boink. Oh. I'll be right back. Here we go again with the schnoozle. Okay, now we'll be able to see the difference between a pause and the previous one, which was a jump cut. Because I cut it off and started it again. Okay, got that part done. Now, when I got started with this, See, you can see all the bare patches in my hair. Which is why I've started cutting it so short. They're harder to see when it's short. But all I did was I got out of the shower with my clean hair, put a little conditioner stuff on it, and then took the brush and did tweak, tweak, and brushed the rest of it all straight back. Now, I started with it all straight back and then did the twink, twink. And then I just let it sit. Now, it's even harder to see where all the bare spots are. Yes, I have an autoimmune issue that likes to take my hair away. It's no fun. But it gives me an excuse to do funky hairstyles. Speaking of funky, I need to fix my funky hair color. It's starting to just... Now, I'm going to take the camo. Which is lighter. And I'm going to get up under these baggy old eyes. Because, you see, 
it looks like a discoloration, but it's not a discoloration. That's actually a vein running right there. And I've got another one similar on the other side. put the lighter one under there to kind of hopefully do some control on those really really intense veins there are times that I wish I had one of those little teeny cameras that I could attach to the bottom of the mirror so I could get like right up in it and you could see what I'm talking about. I ain't got that kind of equipment expense at this point. Maybe in another six, seven hundred years. Y'all better still be watching. No, if I'm still doing it six, seven hundred years from now, you best be watching. Now, one thing with either of these elf can squealers you have to be careful with is that a little bit goes a really long way. It really does. Now, for any of you who have been watching for a while, you know I normally am a brush chick when it comes to putting my foundation on. I don't know when it happened or why it happened, but apparently over this past few months, I have discovered sponges and have found one that just makes me so happy I can't stand myself. You see this? No, that is not entirely stained. It's kind of a brownish color when you buy it. It's one of the little gourd shapes. I picked this bad boy up at Dollar Tree. And it is the most miraculously wonderful bouncy swell uppy sponge I have ever had. Now the water at this point is only part way up because I haven't soaked the whole thing because I only had this little dish over here. So this is the, the this is without the water. This part down here is saturated and been squoze out. I did the squoze out. So it's all ready to do its thing. I don't know why I all of a sudden discovered sponges. I just don't. I don't know what. I ain't got a clue. Now, I've got two different e.l.f. products here. Sometimes I'll show you three different e.l.f. products. Yeah. Um, the Camo CC Cream. I love this stuff, but it is thick. And I do mean thick. It's thick and it's stiff. I tend to take the Camo CC Cream and grab up the e.l.f. Foundation Serum, which is really thin, and I mix them. Sometimes I will take the regular liquid foundation, the flawless finish, which originally was almost as thick as the, the camo CC cream. And I was really new. They've thinned it out a little. But if it comes out really thick, yes, I'm using the back of my hand. The pallets are still in the bathroom after the last wash. See, it just now 
before when I first got this stuff, if I had done this with the original formula that I had originally gotten, it'd still be just sitting there doing nothing. And sometimes it still does it if I've let it sit for a while. So, I figured, let me check first before I do any additions. Now, I absolutely love this stuff. The finish is amazing. And it's exceedingly buildable. It's wonderful. No, they do not have an amazing or extensive color range. But they're working on it. Believe it or not, they really are working on it. They have listened. It has expanded considerably from when I first started using it. Because when I first started using it, if you weren't beige, there's that word again, if you weren't beige, you didn't have a color. And they finally got tired of hearing all of us go, where is the other stuff? Where's the darker stuff? I mean, I couldn't even, even as pale as I am and as putridly silly as my suntans look, because I don't tan, I burn. I go out, I burn, I come in, I peel, I go out, I burn, ad nauseum. But even when I've got a little color in my skin, there was not an e.l.f. product that would cover it originally. They fixed it. It's not perfect yet, but it's a considerable color expansion in range to what it had been. And we're still going, okay, nice start. Keep going. So, yeah, we're trying to get it there. Elf is still small enough that they have a tendency to listen to their clients, which I find wonderful. Ha! Yes, I know. About half the time, I don't do that. I don't put the makeup on while we're sitting here yapping. Anyway, I figured I'd do it anyway. What the heck. Hold on. I'll be right back. Now, that was special. I'm trying to get back where I was. My little grandson came running in here and going, Granny! Granny! And I'm going, what? And I first tried to tell him to go on down the hall. And then he took his hand away from his face and he had God's nosebleed. So, I had to take a break. He's fixed now. Okay, yes. No, I don't have blood on my face. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's like, because that stuff is just wrong.
Okay. Face powder. Yeah, I know. I've had the... Had the stuff on long enough at this point and doing more stuff that it's probably as set as it's going to get, but I'm still going to puff a little powder on and then take my brush to it and depuff it. For any of you who have a problem with scents, be glad you're not here. No, I don't get way up under my eyes. Uh-uh. You want to see crinkle? Let me tell you about crinkle. You get way up under these eyes. I have to put all kinds of extra moisturizer on because the place I'm living is considered high desert. I'm right between regular desert and the foothills of the mountains. So humidity here is really low most of the time. So let me tell you about needing to put on some moisture. And then I put on the powder more for the concept of having a powder base to work the other powder stuff on more than setting the foundation. And you're glad you're not here if you have a scent issue because this is Cody Airspun. It is the most wonderfulest powder on the planet. I don't care what anybody else says. Wonderful powder. My great-grandmother used it. My grandmother used it. Now I've got it. It's wonderful. Nice loose powder. Problem is the original formula with the scent has not changed in all Oh, which is a little annoying, but it is what it is. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't use bronzer near as much as I used to. I just don't. When I first started doing all this stuff, I was all about the bronzer. Because everybody was all about the bronzer. But, I rarely, if ever, get out in the sun. So my face doesn't look sun-touched ever, unless it's burnt. So yeah, I just, never mind the bronzer quite so much. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It's, it's, it's a thing. Sometimes it's not a thing. And with the blush, I have a tendency to stay out here a little further. Yes, I'm doing this because I haven't done this stuff in a long time, showing people what I do with it. Because you see, being of a certain age, you start realizing that gravity sucks. And those apples of your cheeks are now, instead of up here, they're down here. So just stay out here, throw a little color on the sides of your face. Do what Emily Hanhan was call, calling the blush tour. Put a little cut in here and there. And occasionally, you know, all those places that they used to tell you to put bronzer and stuff, I kind of dust it here and there, down the nose. I have not done that blush veiling thing. 
it just does not call to me. little on my chin. Yes, this is a very dense brush. Boing, 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 boing. It's not a floofy brush. Because it's not. Now, if I wanted to get really picky about it, I have floofy brushes. This one is actually a little floofier. But that's not what I'm using today. I'm using what came to hand. Now, this is one of the e.l.f. Yes, e.l.f. No, I am still not sponsored. This is one of the little e.l.f. duos. It's This one in particular is a highlight and blush. And some of them, they've got a bronzer and a highlight. Some of them, they've got a blush and a highlight. This one is called Cantaloupe. No, it doesn't go with the eyeshadow. That's okay. Yes, I'm wearing a gray t-shirt, even though I'm espousing color. We'll get there. Brush, AOA Studio, dollar. I love my dollar stuff. AOA Studio has some of the best brushes I have ever laid hands to. And the damn brushes are a dollar. That's it, straight up. If it's a $2 thing, it's a set. You will get, like, with this one and then you get this one same angle that's when they're two dollars you get an eye one you get a face one picked up that pretty highlight Now, this highlight, and let me tell you, old, broad, or not, I will highlight like I'm trying to signal alien spaceships, okay? Because I like it. Do I do it all the time? Not always. Sometimes I'm a little lighter handed with my highlight, but I wear the highlight. All up around here, down the nose just a little bit. No, I do not put a shining beacon on the end of my nose. I just don't. I don't do the clown life. It's not my thing. I'll leave that to Emily Boo. Little on the chin. A little bit right here. Targeting system. Okay, now, I'm going to pop, put that down, because this has got a little mirror in it. Now, this is the small one again. And I'm going to take some of the dark blue down in the corner here, which is a slightly different blue. than the one I started with. Door. 
And I'm going to sneak right up under here. That is my grandson, being the silly boy he is, now that his crisis is over. And just kind of pull that blue all the way up and around, even though this is one of those things that I'm doing that when I open my eyes completely, you probably won't yeah. see it. Thank you, baby. You let go. He's so adorable. That's so good, Granny. And do the same thing over here. And kind of knit that together and then come across. Ta -dum, ta -dum. All righty. Now, there we go. Got my eyeliner. Actually, I may spray this the first time, just as it is, and then put on the eyeliner and the mascara. I found this bottle. I found this bottle on Amazon. The reason it's so funky looking is because it's got a little thing down in here that's supposed to help keep the pressure so that you can do a spray and just hold it and it'll spray a swath instead of just one little squirt. Like that. It's not a perfect continuous spray, but you don't have to go spend bunches and bunches of bucks with some of the fancier name brands that's got these continuous spray things for their setting sprays and stuff. You know, That was a $5 bottle. And I use whatever setting spray I have to hand. I just pour it in and let it go. Nice fine mist. Okay, let's see about some eyeliner. Now, because my allergies are giving me a fit, I am not, not going to do my waterline today. It would be silly to do it when all it would do is run across my face and end up in the creases around my nose. So, little eyeliner. Yep, Asher is my favorite, favorite, favorite 10 year old grandkid. This is where he's supposed to, if he was neuro average, would yell, but I'm your only 10 year old grandkid. So, oh, yeah. so now he's just playing with his green bear. Yep. 
has a green teddy bear that is his bestest buddy in the whole world. And he's bouncing around on my bed like it's a trampoline. I keep reminding him that's not supposed to happen with him on the bed. Mainly because he has destroyed all of his bed frames. We keep buying heavier ones, he keeps destroying heavier ones. No, my liner is not perfect. I have shaky hands. Yes, I am using brown eyeliner and a brown mascara. What do you think of that? Brown. It's a lot closer to the natural color of my lashes. I was born toe-headed. For those of you who don't know that phrase, I was a blonde baby. So blonde, it was white and pretty much invisible. So I looked bald pretty much for the first couple of years. And then it came out and got slightly darker blonde as I got a little older. By the time I got to high school, I was in what they call the honey wheat stage. And it was glorious, and it was slightly wavy, and it was wonderful, and I enjoyed it. And then I got to about 35 or so, and I lost the honey wheat, and it became what was sometimes referred to as light mouse. All righty, looks like we've gotten the, the nose under control. Yeah again. He calls it a boo-boo nose. It's like, oh. Anyway, yes, when I'm tucked up in here in this corner, Meester can do, jump much quicker than I can getting back out of here. I'd be flipping over equipment and everything trying to move quickly. Ooh. Anyway, That's what we've got so far. Got the brown mascara on. Where was it? Oh yeah, light mouse to dark mouse. Now don't push your thumb up. Please don't. <laughs> yes, honey. Oh good. <laughs> I was afraid he was going to bleed again. Oh. Don't bounce around so much, sweetheart. It doesn't help. You're silly. Anyway, Dark Mouse started bleed, started coloring the hair. At one point, my hair was so long I could sit on it while it was braided. 
And then things started getting weird with my hair, and I started having more and more problems dealing with the heat because of the autoimmune issues I have. So off the hair went. So now I have a mohawk. This is an actual mohawk. It's shaved all the way up under here. And then, there he goes. Yay, big sister's got him. No. I started in with the funky colors. I've been bleached out white. I've been pink. I've been purple. I've been blue. I've been green. I've been very red. It's fun. And when my hair starts to feel too damaged after too much fiddling around with it, I just buzz the whole thing down and let the top knot grow back in. Like my like I Yes, I've got I've got stretched ears. This post says stay weird. Now, let's see. Mouth color Mouth color. Mouth color. What am I going to do? Which one am I going to do? Ha, I'm going to do this one. This one's Physician's Formula. I like Physician's Formula. At least this particular formula they did. It's the Velvet Finish Healthy Lip. Now people will tell you do not go ham with a bold lip when you're doing a bold eye look. And sometimes I do that. Tone it down a little. Sometimes I don't. Now because my grandson is having this issue, and I may get called into service again to help with the nosebleed thing, I'm not going to go put on the coral sweater that I got out to put over the gray shirt. Not going to do it. I've got a little, just no buttons, nothing, just got a lace front on it, solid back, little lightweight coral sweater. That I was just going to slide on to look cute. But with all this foolishness going on, I'm not risking getting blood on that sweater. I'm not doing it. Love y'all, though I do. So, I'm just going to put on whatever lipstick I feel like. I don't have to kind of get it to go there. The only thing I don't like about this applicator is that it tickles a little. When you do like you're using it as a lining pencil and use that little fine tip at the vermilion border, that's a technical term, believe it or not. That's what it's called. The vermilion border. So far, so good. Yes, my teeth are horrendous. That's why I don't smile open mouthed all the time. I've got, I was put on tetracycline as a little tiny child. 
and tetracycline tends to stain teeth from the interior if you take it before your adult teeth have descended into your mouth. And since I was given the tetracycline when I was very young, all the teeth got stained. And you know all that bleaching stuff that they do? It doesn't really work on teeth that have been stained that way. It's all the way down. It's not just a surface. It's not just a couple of layers. It's all the way down into the matrix. Now I'm going to take that highlight, take a little bit on the brush, see if I can get it in here to do the thing, to do the thing with the thing. That does okay. good. Now, you get finished with stuff and you decide maybe you got a little too much highlighter or something somewhere. See this brush has still got powder on it from where I was brushing on. There you go, fell down the shine. Tip, 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 tip. Yep, I've got stay weird and just a regular plug in the other one. Yes, I could sit here and admire myself for days. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. Do I look like that flower? Probably not. But it was fun. And your choices. Don't let anybody take them away from you. If your husband, spouse, whatever, seago, looks at you and says, but I don't like it. You look at them and go, who asked you? Because if you didn't, they got nothing to say. Unless you ask directly for an opinion. Nobody's got anything else to say to you. If they don't like it, tell them they can stay home if you were going out somewhere. If they don't like it, tell them tough. If they don't like it, tell them to grow up. You're enjoying yourself. You're having fun. Keep doing it. You're the only one who can tell yourself no. Here's to another few years of doing this. Water! Mind your manners. Keep your distance. If you're back under mask restrictions, wear the damn Get the vaccine. People keep telling me, but God will protect me. It's like, excuse me, but most of the time we consider the gift of healing as something God given to these doctors. The doctors came up with this. Where do you think they got it? There now. Don't be like the person who said, God will save me from, 
from the flood and they send the, the evac truck and then they send a motorboat and then they send a helicopter and they keep turning everything down because God will save me. And he got drowned and he ended up at the pearly gates and God, and he's going, God, why didn't you save me? He said, I sent you a truck and a boat and a helicopter. Why didn't you take one? Do it. Get the vaccine. Be good.